Hello, my name is Julius Musso. I'm a CTO and co-founder at MergeBase, uh, MergeBase.com, a cybersecurity uh, company focused on application security, or actually what's called an SCA company, Software Composition Analysis. And um, here, I'm going to pass it over to my colleague here, Dellen Elliott, to introduce himself. Hi there, guys. Uh, I'm Dellen. I'm a software engineer at MergeBase. And uh, it's, yeah, it's going to be me and Julius walking you through the Log4j vulnerability, the recently uh, discovered vulnerability, Log4Shell. And so we're going to be exploiting Log4Shell using an example exploit. Uh, and then we're going to show you how MergeBase can protect against that exact exploit in your runtime environments, as well as just discovering Log4j itself. And then at the end, Julius will be explaining uh, the exploit a little bit and uh, going into detail about the vulnerability. So uh, I'm going to get started by showing you our example application and how we're... All right, so this is our example application that's vulnerable to the log4j vulnerability. Uh, what this application does is it will log every uh, log and attempt and we'll just put the username in the log. So what we're going to do is we're going to feed it a crafted exploit string. Here's our exploit string that we've pre-crafted. And what it's going to do is it's just going to echo a terminal command uh, to a temp file on the server. So let me run this exploit. Let me just log in or not. And there, uh, as we can see, incorrect credentials. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm now going to pass off to Julius to see what's happening on the server side. Okay, thank you, Dallin. Um, let's see, and this, there it is. So the exploit has uh, executed and has created the file. Sure enough, the file was created, uh, yeah, just uh, like 30 seconds ago. So, you know, that's that's the bad news has happened. This poor, vulnerable uh, Apache Tomcat server running log4j has been compelled to run arbitrary commands provided by you with no credentials. Exactly. And that just shows how lethal and easy to achieve uh, this RC exploit is. So what we're going to show now is how merge base can protect you against uh, this vulnerability. So I will- Okay, uh, I guess back. I better inoculate the, oh, I- um... Oh, are we doing, you didn't inoculate it already? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay. I'm gonna steal the screen back from you. We're having a screen fight, screen fight. Right. Uh, okay, so I will go, I'm gonna shut down Tomcat here. And then and now make sure Tomcat is shut down. Yeah, looks like it is. And maybe make the screen a little bigger. So, and then what I'm gonna do is we have our special merge base command line tool, inoculate, which is what that's gonna do is it's gonna look at every Java um, library on the system, and it's going to inject some instrumentation into those into those Java libraries, giving us the ability to to monitor them and to even block uh, them at a method or function granularity. So if there's a bad function in one of them, and we want to turn off that function by applying this uh, merge base uh, runtime protection, we call it inoculation, um, <clears throat> it gives us the ability to to yeah turn off the uh, parts of the system on a function by function basis. And in this case, how do we know what function to turn off or is that already provided by merge base? Yeah, exactly, right? That's part of our, uh, our vulnerability feed that's uh, you know always uh, discovering the vulnerabilities and trying to allocate them, assign them to the specific uh, functions within, within the libraries with the known vulnerabilities. Nice. So as a, as a security professional, I can just go right to the log4j uh, vulnerability and I can just block it immediately without having to have any developer level knowledge. Dalit, you work for us. Of course, that's the answer. 
Yes. You helped implement well, that. Hey, well, I know that. Yeah. But I'm not making this video for me. So, okay. Good point. Fair enough. <laughs> All right, so the inoculation is uh, going on here. As you can see, it's finding all of the jar files uh, inside this uh, Tomcat instance. So it has tons of libraries attached to it and it's completed. Okay, I will start Tomcat back up then. All right. Okay. I believe it should be up now. So that's running. Yeah. What I'll do is I will take back the screen and I'll show you what this looks like on our merge base dashboard. All right. So we come over here to our merge base dashboard and we can see here we have our struts application, which was just updated. And as we visit this application's uh, overview page, we can see a list of the components that MergeBase has detected within the application. And the one that we're worried about most right now, obviously. Am I making it a little bigger? Like maybe just zoom in a little? Just, uh, you know, I don't have my glasses on. Sure. Thank you. All right, let me, um, that's probably works like that. All right. So we have log for jcore here running version 2.7. So as you see that we see a number of CVEs and this is one we're uh, obviously worried about is the new 2021 CVE with a risk score of 10. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to visit this suspicious methods tab and we're going to find the one associated with uh, the newest vulnerability and that's this one right here. It's got a risk score of 10 and associated with the 44228 uh, vulnerability. What we're going to do is we're going to set block on uh, that suspicious method. And what block is going to do is it's actually not going to allow your Java program to uh, execute this method. And what, uh, what that'll do is that will actually prevent us uh, from executing this exploit. So if I pass the screen back to Julius, Julius, you can, if you want to clean up the evidence that I was there in the first place. Yeah, yeah done, done. All done, all right, perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my exploit string again and uh, let's see what happens. My yeah, I mean, loading. of course, incorrect and credentials, of course, because that's incorrect. not a... That was not a, a valid valid username, username, of course. And then, uh, yeah, and so I'll grab the screen. Let's see if um, the file got created. No, no uh, attempt.fury or pon.fury this time. And go look at the Tomcat logs. Let's see if anything interesting happened in them. Whoops. And sure enough, you to see the stack trace here this big stack trace and uh you know um the, the the exploit was attempted yeah but it was blocked by our block mitigation yeah and sure enough you can see that um yeah right here the jandi lookup call was attempted Mer the merge base instrumentation then uh, intercepted that call and, and blocked it and didn't allow it to complete. And so uh, thanks to merge base um, intercepting and blocking that call, right? Uh, the attacker cannot, cannot get in, cannot cause their code to be executed. Perfectly said. And uh, yeah, so that uh, shows you the value of merge base and uh, we can set and unset uh, such uh, mitigations as well. And uh, if I will just grab the screen one more time and I will just show that if, uh, if a block mitigation feels too aggressive uh, for, your, um, uh, for your company, or if you, you don't want the idea of creating these exceptions, then you can also monitor um, instead. And what that will do is that will give you uh, information on when this um, 
when this function is used, but without blocking it. So for something like the JNDI lookup, unless you have a known use case where you are performing JNDI lookups uh, in your log files, which is probably rare for uh, a lot of people, uh, then this uh, path should never be executed. So monitoring will allow you to see if you've been attacked uh, without causing exceptions uh, in your application stack. Uh, so what we can do is see, we've actually just seen that our method was blocked. And what we'll, we can do instead is I can do this again. Try to log in. And again, incorrect credentials pops up. But what we will be able to see uh, is if after we give it a moment to propagate, that we got a usage alert. And uh, this usage alert, the details of which are that the JNDI lookup public string class was invoked one time. So as you can see, you were attacked one time uh, on this application. Um, yeah, so that just shows a little bit of the overview of, uh, of what MergeBase can do to help you deal with the threat. And uh, to give you a little bit more information about the Screen threat. Screen fight. Itself, Screen fight. <laughs> Julius is um, going to give yeah. you a little bit more information about the vulnerability. Yeah, well, and also because uh, just to show with the monitoring, of course, the, uh, the exploit is allowed to proceed because it's just exactly. in the monitoring mode rather than the, uh, yes. the block mode. But you've been immediately notified of it. Uh, through yeah. the MergeBase dashboard. And so, you know, it gives you that. Notifications for that through a number of platforms, mm -hmm. including like Slack notifications. Oh, yeah. So, um, yeah, that's um, that was the brief overview we really wanted to provide on the video today. Uh, <clears throat> you know, about the exploit and about uh, using MergeBase to monitor or block it. But I thought it would be fun just to show a little bit how the exploit actually works. Um, so here's the, um, this, uh, the exploit code that we're running this this demo code that we found on the internet just you know everyone's favorite thing to do is to run the random 40 megabytes of uh, random code you download on the internet you know run that on your own servers that's always fun um but now that we've got that going let's see if that's it, or is the command in my yeah it is cool so the um Is it uh, the, so? What, what what Dallin's been logging in as is using this um, this special string that Tom that Log4j uh, interprets, right? It's and it's a JNDI and then LDAP and then colon colon and then here was the rest of it. Um, I'm just kind of putting that up there just so I can see it. Um, it's very oh too many LDAPs there. Anyway, it was very interesting to see how this actually works. Um, so first, this here is the the exploit that we're running, except I had to URL encode uh, a plus sign there, otherwise it didn't work. So I'm just going to take that and without all that other stuff, let's just see what is in there. And that that guy needs to be turned into a plus. Right. Oops. Yeah. So yeah. So it's just a base sixty four encoding uh, of the exploit that we want to run. So what what's interesting is that this this server here, uh, the exploit server, it's um, you can see it's running on an LDAP port and it's running on an HTTP port. So let's just do the LDAP part here, and as luck would have it, curl is willing to deal with that URL. Good old curl. So now it's gone. It's connected to registry.merge base on port 8444 using some sort of LDAP protocol. And this is the answer it's gotten back. Um, you know, and what I, from my understanding, when Java does this JNDI LDAP call, when it sees this, Java then immediately thinks to itself, oh, I know what to do with that. I'm going to go grab this class from this URL. So now, just to be exciting, I'm going to use wget because wget 
automatically downloads. Uh, now, see, so what you kind of do is you have to put the URL back together. So this happened here. The LDAP call happened on 84444. And then on that LDAP call, the LDAP server said, I want you to go grab something from port 8555 using HTTP protocol instead. And so you put that URL together that Java, you know, is supposed to go and get this from here. And you have to add the dot class at the end. So I'm just going to do that. And do the again. And then maybe it just timed out up the uh, the Java exploit. And then uh, what I've gone is I've gone and taken this. Let's take that and um, just move it into, you know, the merge base uh, code repository, T69RGSS. Um, where are you? That's the wrong one. T69RGSS, right? So IntelliJ, you know, it's happy to just decompile it first. And I can see what's actually going on here. So what we're doing is we send that base64 to that LDAP server, and then it on the fly, it's generating this Java code uh, on the fly. And the Java code internally, uh, you know, contains this command. If it's running on Windows, it's going to run it through SH. If it's running, I mean, uh, through Linux, SH. If it's running on Windows, it's going to run it through CMD. And just like that. And the magic here, so all of these libraries that it's using are actually included in, in Java. They, uh, they come with Java. You can't, if you have Java, you have these libraries. So, You're cutting, oh, out, uh, cutting out a bit there. Yeah. So yeah, that's our that's a that's a wrap. That's our video. All right. Yeah. Um, we even had a disconnection in our video. <laughs> <sighs> Indeed. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I don't know what else to say. Like I don't know, follow me on Twitter or something. Um. Yeah, no, well, uh, Merge Base has oh, been. Uh, I'm disconnecting again. Okay. <laughs> Merge, we've been uh, doing a lot of work around the log4j CVE. Is it some, the biggest thing that's happened uh, in the open source and SCA vulnerability industry in quite a long time? Uh, so Julius has put together a log4j detector. Uh, if you go to github.com slash Merge Base, you can see that it's the top uh, repository on GitHub for that right now. Uh, and uh, just go to mergebase.com. You can find out more about us uh, and what we offer. Uh, feel free to get in contact with us and uh, follow Julius on Twitter at, Javs, <laughs> at Java Julius. So uh, you can do that. Uh, anyways, well, thank you guys for watching and uh, oh, hope this provided a little bit more information for you guys and let you know how Mergebase can help you with a vulnerability like this. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Bye.